All right, episode two of the 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle build. In this episode, we're going to assemble and install everything that goes along with the rear diagonal arm. The bushings, the bearings, the seals, the shock absorber. So here's a list of things that you'll need. You'll want some grease that's made specifically for wheel bearings. You'll need the bushing and spacer for the front of the diagonal arm. Mine came with a little packet of grease. We'll use that when we put it together. You'll want the bolt that holds the front part of the diagonal arm. You'll need two washers. You want them both on that side like I have them. You need your axle or stub axle and three spacers, an inner, an outer, and a center. If you can, get an old bearing from when you took it out of the car and grind it down like this. This will help us to kind of guide the new bearings into place. We'll use it as a drift. You don't have to do this, but it might help. Then from there, all you need is a new inner bearing, like this. A new outer bearing. Notice that this one is a roller style, not the ball bearing like the inner. And it does have a removable center race. You saw it fall out there. You'll need a circlip to hold the inner bearing in place and you'll want two seals just like that. You may have bought a kit that contains only one seal. We need that o-ring too, right there. But you may have bought a kit that contains only one seal and they make these kits to service multiple years of cars, but for this 1971, we need two seals. So I had to buy an extra seal, and then we don't need any of that other stuff, so we'll get rid of it. Uh, you want the bearing retainer plate. You'll need the four bolts that go on that. You'll need your shock absorber and two spacers for the bottom portion of that. And you'll also need two bolts with two washers each, one for the top, one for the bottom of the shock absorber. You'll need a few sockets to match your bolt and nut sizes. Some circlet pliers will definitely come in handy. A hammer, and more importantly, a soft face mallet. You'll also maybe need a axle nut and cotter pin if you're reinstalling the wheel, your brake backing plate, and not to forget we need the actual diagonal arm itself. Let's get going. So to start we're just gonna start at the front end and put in the two bushings and spacer. Like I said mine came with a little packet of grease. We'll use that to lube up some of the surfaces that are going to move and this part's pretty self-explanatory. Just put on some grease and slip those spacers into place. I just pressed mine into place with my hand and didn't seem to cause me any issues but if you need to you can certainly pull out that soft face mallet and give those a little tap if you need to give them some persuasion to get to where they need to go. So remember this is a pivot point on the car so feel free to make sure you got plenty of grease so that that pivot bolt can move up and down as the car suspension travels. From there we're going to install the inner bearing. We just want to make sure that the bearing, the place where the bearing is going to set is nice and clean. So a rag and some brake cleaner will do the trick. Then we need to pack our bearing. So if you've never packed a bearing before, just put a glob of grease in the palm of your hand like this and press that bearing down onto the grease until you see it press through the other side. You can't really over pack a bearing, so feel free to just get in there and press as much grease into both sides of these bearings as you can. See that? Just like that. You should see that squish through the other side. We're going to do that to both bearings. And just make sure on this outer bearing 
that you keep track of that center race. You can see I took it out and it will fall out or get pressed out several times through the process of this. So just keep track of it and know that it needs to go in the middle of that bearing. And once you have all of your bearings packed up with grease, we can go ahead and install the inner bearing. What you want to do in this case is check the bearing on one side. You should have some writing. Common practice is to have that writing always facing outward in the event that somebody needed to read what type of bearing has been put in. So just go ahead and set that into place as evenly as possible. You don't want any one side to be higher than the other. And from there, we can just take the old bearing that we ground down, set it on top, and give it some light taps with the mallet. Now you want to make sure that you're only tapping the outer edge of this bearing and later on if you're pressing it with a drift of some sort you only want to tap the outer edge of the bearing itself. Tapping the inner race of the bearing can damage the bearing and you're gonna have a bad day after that. You can see here that that right side was a little bit high it was going in a little bit slower than the left so I focused on it and then moved over to a socket extension just to slowly move it down the rest of the way. Uh, you want to make sure you're not using anything that is sharp or pointy so no screwdrivers uh, or you can damage the bearing doing it that, that way as well. But once you go back and forth, back and forth, and got it into place, in this case you'll know it's in place because on the other side you'll see the edge of the bearing butt up to the stopping retaining bracket right there, and that's as far down as it'll let you go. Next up, we need to install the circlip that holds the bearing in place right there. And what I like to do is just make sure that the groove that that clip is going to set in doesn't have any debris or anything that's going to stop it from falling, fully seating into place and grab your circlip pliers give it a whoops try that again give it a squeeze and gently push that down into place and I like to make sure I'm squeezing mine extra tight so that the sides of the circlip don't gouge the sides of the bearing surface or the diagonal arm surface. From there just to make sure it got fully set I like to give mine a little bit of a tap to spin it slightly just to make sure that it set in place where it should. Beautiful. Okay now we just need to press the seal into place and to do that we want to adhere to the same process as pressing the bearing in. Just press it in as evenly as you can to get it started and then using the old bearing as a guide set it on there and give it some taps until the seal presses all the way down against the bearing surface. And you'll notice on this inner seal it actually sits down below the top edge of the diagonal arm. All right, from here we can work on getting that center spacer put into place. Uh, before we do that, we want to fill this hollow portion of the arm full of grease, two ounces of grease to be exact. So I marked about what it would take to be two ounces on the side of my bottle there you saw. But just go ahead and put in a few big globs of grease, just like this, and slop it all around on the inside. And then lube up that center spacer, spacer as well and just slide it in just like that. From there we can install the outer bearing. Again we're going to make sure that the writing is on the outside and then this one should go into place a lot easier than the other. Just take your soft face mallet and give it a few light taps and it should slide itself right in. And then take note on this one 
that it actually sits up a little bit from the rest of the surface. So if it doesn't seat all the way down flush, that's okay, it's not supposed to. Now let's flip this over and install the inner bearing spacer. And you'll see that one side of this spacer is chamfered. We want this chamfer to be facing outward, or in the way this is showing right now, it'll be facing up. So just put that in, it should slide right into place. Add a little bit of grease if you like, and we can install the axle. You might wanna put just a little bit of grease on there as well, so it slides in easy, and just press it right into place. There, just like that. So this is gonna be a little bit of a tight fit, and mine's giving me a little bit of trouble, but just gently tap it into place until it's all the way through. Just like that. So you saw me take out that inner race of the outer bearing. Uh, now I'm just gonna slide it back on and tap it back down with the socket extension that I use to tap in the bearing. So at this point, um, you're going to see that there's a little bit of a gap on the back side of this axle. I'm gonna use a hammer to gently tap it and close it up, but if you were to put this back on the car and put your brake drum back on and hook up your CV joint, you can just put your brake drum on and use the axle nut to tighten this and squish it all together. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to be doing that, so I'm just gonna give it a few quick taps with a rubber mallet to set that down a little bit better and call it good for right now. And now we can install the seal for the bearing retainer. You know the drill. Set it in place, and on this one, you can check the back side of it to see if it's fully seat, seated, set, I don't know. You can see there I've got a gap, so I'm going to use that old bearing and just keep tapping it down until that gap is closed. So tap the edge, tap the edge, work around, top, bottom, left, right, and check your gap, and once it's all the way set, you're good to go. So let's just make sure we've got this face the right way. We need to make sure that this is pointing down, that goes towards the ground. When we apply or install our brake backing plate, we wanna make sure that the brake adjuster is also facing down, that's this guy right here. And there's gonna be a hole that needs to face towards the front of the car that the emergency brake cables go through. So make sure that you have the correct either driver's or passenger side plate on the correct diagonal arm. So from there, we can install our rubber O-ring. My gloves are a little bit greasy, so I just use that to very slightly grease up that O-ring and just slide that over the outermost ridge, just like that. From there, we can install our bearing retainer plate. I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease on the inside of that seal, wipe up the mating surface to make sure it's clean, and then make note that this plate has two little divots on either side. These two divots, they need to be facing downward. So make sure that when you put them onto your axle shaft, they are facing down, which is up in this camera angle, but down in reality. You know what I'm trying to say. So from there, we can now bolt this into place. Uh, these bolts, like I said, they're gonna have two washers, one thin wavy washer, and then one thicker regular washer. You'll just thread those on, and I like to tighten them in a crisscross pattern with the regular ratchet until they're about as firm as you can get without going too crazy, and then pull out the torque wrench and torque these down to 43 foot-pounds. From here, we can install the outer spacer. And in this case, the beveled edge is actually gonna to go towards the inside 
just like that. And again, it should just slide itself right into place without any issue. Perfect. All right, hang in there. We're almost done. It's all downfield from here. Now we can install the diagonal arm. Just slide it into place. We already greased up that inner spacer when we assembled the front portion. So just put your two washers on the outside, just like that. Both washers go on the outside. Slide your pivot bolt into place and use your hex head socket to tighten it down. Now this angle with these wrenches is a little awkward, so using a little bendable extension like that really helps. Once you got it mostly tight, grab the torque wrench and torque it down to 87 foot-pounds. There we go. Then to keep this bolt from backing out once it's been installed and having your car fall apart while you're driving, you want to peen the edge of the frame down into one of those notches so that that bolt stays in place. Then we can move on to installing the shock absorber. Just slide one bolt in with the spacer, slip in the shock absorber, slide the bolt through a little bit more, add the second spacer, slide the bolt through all the way, add your locking washer and your nut, and tighten that up to 43 foot-pounds. Once that's done, just do the same thing up top. Grab your bolt, washer, slip it through, lock washer, nut, and torque to 43 foot-pounds again. Perfect. And just like that, you are done. So to do the other side, just repeat everything that we've done here again. Thanks for watching, and until next time.